Hello everyone and welcome to Sutton's Days. Today we are going to be pressure canning a really really good soup. <laughs> it is a uh, 15 bean pizza soup. Oh my gosh this is so good. Let's go. What we're gonna do first is we are going to brown up uh, a pound of ground sausage. So I'm using my canned ground sausage. Okay and getting it out of the jar, which is typically easier said than done. There we go. Okay, so we're going to brown up this ground sausage. And while that's browning up, we're going to prep some other stuff. Okay, so we've washed, rinsed, and sorted through our beans to make sure. Now remember this is 15 bean, so there's peas, there's lima bean, there's everything in here, right? It's gonna be really, really good. We're gonna take an eighth of a cup, which is also two tablespoons of beans per jar. Now, I have not measured this out before like this. This is normally a crock pot uh, meal, and we enjoyed it so much that I wanted to can some up for lunches. Phil would open up the jars uh, in the fridge from the leftovers and just eat them cold out of the fridge. But that's Phil. Phil also eats cream of mushroom soup cold out of the can. So, you know, Phil doesn't like messing around. <laughs> but um, we're going to see how many that we get out of this here. All of these beans, now this was not... I have to give huge, huge credit to my canning sisters, Heather and Mandy, from the Needy Homesteader and More to Life. There you go. Because uh, I was sitting at my desk trying to figure out how I would separate all of this, right, for jars. Because it's a crock pot meal. You just dump and go. But it's a little more involved when you are canning it. Okay, I've got a few extra left, so I might get a second canner load out of this. Let's see. Okay, so I had enough for 25 pint jars. Having two tablespoons or an eighth of a cup each. Okay, so now we've got that part done. Next, we're going to cut up one bell pepper. And this is going to go much easier because I have my Vidalia chopper, which is going to make them nice and uniform and beautiful-ish, you know. Okay, so let's put these here. Come on, Lise. And then let me prep the onion. You want one red onion. There we go. I'm just going to put it in some nice smaller sizes to put in the Vidalia chopper. This chopper is amazing. Okay, so we're going to take this. Ha! That's the way it's done. Okay, we're going to back you up just a little bit. So we're going to take this and there, I just do that and then poof! So much faster. So much nicer. So we're going to do that with our onion and our bell pepper. And we're going to do the best that we can to divide those vegetables into the 25 jars. Now, this was a crock pot recipe. And I will leave a link below to... Uh, where I first saw the recipe <clears throat> and I made it for the family and I'll tell you what <laughs> when I told them that we were gonna have 15 bean pizza soup I literally heard their eyes roll there was such doubt <laughs> okay but they all went back for seconds look at that I mean how easy is that right doesn't even take a lot okay so this recipe 
um, is meant for a crock pot where you just dump and go. And it worked out beautifully. So we are kind of faking it till we make it um, as far as turning it into a canning recipe because I didn't want to, I want to, how do I say this? No soak method the beans because there's peas in here, there's lentils in here, and if I cook them twice, they will disintegrate. And that's not what I want. I want a nice hearty soup. So this is the way that we're doing it. Okay, so I'm gonna mix these up just for ease and convenience. And then we will, let's take the lid off. Okay, we'll bring you in close. There we go. Okay, so now we are just going to add a little bit to each jar so that it gets a little bit of onion, a little bit of green pepper. I don't know, I was really, really debating on increasing the amount of vegetables, but I don't want to overburden the soup. You know, I still want it to be a soup by the time it's done. Um, and these beans are gonna swell. So Heather and Mandy and I were kind of breaking down the recipe and trying to figure out how to make it happen, and those guys were so helpful in doing this because I got a little stumped there for a hot second about how many beans to put in because it doesn't look like a lot does it right but Mandy assures me that these beans swell much more than you know uh, pinto beans and Heather did the same thing so they had both canned with these beans before. I have never canned with these beans before. Um, but when this works out, <laughs> you know I'm gonna. You know I'm gonna. I love the idea of having all of these beans in the soup. Um, in addition to just a little bit of meat, right? Oh yeah, we can do this. So you're basically putting in, I don't know, about a tablespoon of the diced vegetables. The trick is making sure that you're getting a combo, okay? And, you know, somewhat equal part of green pepper and onion. Got a few left over, so I will be able to add more to some of them, which is good because I'm of the mind that green pepper and onion, you can never have too much on a pizza, right? Right. Okay. Kind of eyeballing this. But you can get as methodical as you want. You know me. I'm just getting her done. Okay. One last scoop. Oh, let's do that one. Okay. So now we've got the beans, the onions, and the peppers in the jar. Okay, the sausage is done browning, and now I'm opening up a jar of my canned mushrooms. Okay, so I opened up a jar of my canned mushrooms, right? And I'm going to drain the liquid into a pot on the side. There we go. And then I am going to empty the mushrooms. And I'm going to get mushrooms into every single jar, just like we did. Now, it may only be one, <laughs> okay? And I'm being very cautious with the amounts that I am putting into the jar, just because I don't know how much these beans are going to swell. I might go pick up another jar of mushrooms. I think I'm going to. I think I'm going to have to. I mean, they're mushrooms. They're mushrooms. And we want at least one in every jar, right? Yeah. Hello. Yeah, I need another jar of mushrooms. The original recipe called for one and a half cups. Well, a pint jar, as you know, is two cups. Where did I leave off? So, um, it's just hard for me to split them up like that, you know? So I'm doing two pints of my home canned mushrooms. <clears throat> totally up to you. You decide what works best for you. And we'll discover at the end 
if we could have added more to the jars. So we'll be discovering together. But either way, this soup is going to be amazing. How do I know this? Because I've already tried it. And when my grandsons go back for seconds, then you know it's a winner. Okay. I have, did I get everybody with something? Yes. Okay. So now we're just going to get the last little bit, divide it up into the remaining jars. And hopefully this won't take up so much extra space. Now as my buddy, my pal, Sue Bender, uh, let me know. You can never overcook mushrooms. Is that like the best news ever? Yeah, I know. And next, we are going to open a can of large pitted black olives. And we're really going to hope that there's 25 of them in here. Oh, if you can find the diced olives, that's awesome. I could not. So in this case also, we're going to... No, we're not going to drain the juice. We're not going to... That's That would be salty. I try to use as much of the liquid as I can from everything. I think we've got 25. What do you think? I do. Okay. If you can find the diced olives, that's great. I hunted high and low, couldn't find them. So we're using these. And honestly, I think it's kind of fun. It's like the cherry in the fruit cocktail. You know, being the one to find the cherry in the fruit cocktail. <laughs> it's good stuff. Good stuff. Okay, yes. So we are like seriously divvying this up. Now, another way that you could do this, really, is to just put everything into the pot except for the beans. But I really wanted to separate this as evenly as I could throughout because you know how sometimes, um, some when you're canning soup, sometimes the jars. Some jars have more of this, or some jars have more of that. And I really wanted this kind of evenly distributed. I think we could almost get two for every jar. Um, so that is what I'm aiming for. And that's why we're doing it this way. But if that doesn't work for you, then by all means, um, put you know all the veggies and everything. Um, cook it all except for the beans. Put it all into a stock pot and do it that way. Um, okay, so the sausage is done. So now we are going to scoop out sausage. Oh, and we're going to put that. And again, dividing it between 25 jars. I think the hardest part about this is keeping track of where you left off. So we made this up. I made some garlic bread for everyone, and uh, they had garlic bread with it. And when you serve it, you sprinkle a little bit of shredded mozzarella on top. Oh, okay. I have to tell you, the way that I heard their eyes roll, it actually had me concerned. I'm like, please, please let this turn out good. <laughs> okay. So when everybody started eating it, and then they went back for seconds, you know, there's the polite bowl, you know, we'll have it just because, you know. Grandma made it. Okay, fine. But um, when they went back for seconds, then you know you got a winner. And when Phil, oh my gosh, when Phil devoured it for lunch, for his lunches, um, I knew, I knew we had a winner. You know, I, I tend to like a lot of different things that the family sometimes goes, Graham, what are you doing? <laughs> okay. But... I may be running a little short on sausage. Um, so, well, okay. We're really close. We're two jars off on the sausage. Let's see what I can get here. But uh, everybody liked it so much. You know, one's just not going to have any sausage in it. So, those are the risks that you take 
Did I have any that had a lot? No. Okay, so there's a little bit of sausage in there. It's okay. That's okay. We have one jar that doesn't have any sausage. I'll have to remember that care jar. Now, pepperonis. The original recipe said, oh, the best way to do it is to get one of those stick pepperonis, and then you slice it thin and you cut it into quarters. And I was like, yeah, no. So I got these because these are incredible. I mean, you see the size of these, right? Look at that. Look at that. So, oh, good. Quality control. They're good. So that's where all the work's done. And honestly, it was cheaper. Yeah, it was cheaper. So one bag of these will definitely get me around on the jars. Um, and what's funny is I didn't notice them very much in the leftovers that I took to work. Um, they're there, but it doesn't have an overpowering taste. It's just one of those, oh yeah, okay, it's pizza. It just adds to the fun. Do not put that part in the jar. Okay. So, you want to evenly distribute this, or as much as you can, into the jars. So the sausage is done, and all this stuff is in there, and next, we are going to get started on the um, broth, which we are going to mix together and heat just a tiny bit, just a tiny bit. Okay, let's go. Okay, so what's fun about the Vidalia chopper is I also ha -ha, chopped up my garlic cloves. So easy. So easy. Okay. Now you add the stock. I am increasing the amount of stock that the original recipe called for because of the number of jars and the beans. Um, one of the things that I did realize uh, after we used, you know, after I put the leftovers and used them for lunch was that um, the beans swelled even more. So we want to increase this because we're canning it. What I'm putting in here, the recipe calls for chicken stock. I am putting onion stock and mushroom stock because I have it and because it's good and it fits with the theme, right? Okay, so we're going to turn up the heat on this. We've got the garlic in there and next we're going to add okay, two teaspoons of oregano. Okay, we're also going to take this time to add, well, I grabbed the wrong one. So we're going to add about a quarter teaspoon of red pepper flakes. Why? Because it's good. So I'm at three quarts of stock. I'm going to put four right now. Yep. Okay, and we're going to add one 24-ounce jar of marinara sauce. And I'm going to give it a little stir. There we go. So seven, seven cups of stock would be two quarts and one pint. You know what? I'm going to add the other jar of marinara okay. sauce. One more jar of marinara sauce. There we go. Let's give it a good stir, and then we're going to bring it up. We're just going to heat it. Not necessarily a boil, but we're going to heat it because we want that garlic to cook through, you know. So we'll be back when that's ready. Okay, so we heated it up, and we're going to give it a good stir as we go along. We're going to fill the jars to within an inch, or to an inch headspace. Okay. I can tell you... It smells like a pizzeria in here. It smells so good. This is one of those hearty meals that apparently every age will enjoy. I'm going to get these all filled and then I'll be back. So I ended up making a second batch of the broth. And I still came up short on three jars. 
So I'm not making another batch of broth for three jars. So I'm just going to, I don't know, make a pizza. Um, so that's 22 jars. So 11 pints. I will put the recipe in the description box below. I'll break it down for you. Um, so now it is time to get these ready to go in a canner. The rule of thumb is to debubble everything, but there's nothing large in here. I mean, it's really mostly broth. So oh, I will just get in there and move stuff around. There we go. Because those olives, they may be hiding stuff. Those dastardly olives. This smells so good. So, so good. Okay, and then when we are done debubbling, we will clean off the rims because this was a hot mess getting it all in here. <laughs> I dripped tomato based broth everywhere. Everywhere. Okay. So it's always, always necessary to clean off your rims. It gives you not only the opportunity to make sure that you have no food debris on the rims, but also to double check for any defects, any chips, any cracks, because most of the time you will feel it as you take the paper towel around it. I always clean with vinegar. It just works really good. It degreases and everything. <clears throat> and there is sausage in this. We did put sausage in it. So that's something you want to be very, very cognizant of. Okay. And oh, I don't know, remember where I left off. Okay. So these are all ready now for the lids. I'm pressure canning so I don't heat up the lids. Pop them on there. You want to do your best to not touch the underside if you can. It is not a deal breaker if you do. It's just not a preferred thing because then you're possibly contaminating the underside of the lid with anything that you might have on your hands. Safety first. Always one short, right? Okay, now we're going to put the rings on. So I grabbed a bunch of rings off of my bungee cord, and it made me think about a question I get a lot. Your rings, they're, they're looking a little shoddy there, Elise. Well, they do. They age. They definitely get older. And like my jars, most all of them I purchased used. Now, I can tell from feeling this one, it's not going to go on good. So that one's just going to get pitched. It's time to go. But this one went on nicely, so... Put it on finger tight. We're going to double stack this. And I'm going to be three jars over my canner limit. So what I'm going to do is set myself up so that I have two canner loads going uh, with this soup. So I'm going to put 15 in one and the remainder in the other. Um, because otherwise I've got three jars and I'm not putting three jars into a pressure canner. And I don't have anything else to can up with it at the moment. But I'm going to get these all in. <clears throat> Pardon me. And I'm going to... There we go. I'm going to pressure can these at 10 pounds of pressure for my weight. And if you don't have a weight and you're using the gauge then do 11 pounds of pressure or go by your altitude okay and i'm doing it at the time for the meat and the beans or i'm sorry the pressure i'm sorry the time i'm doing it at the time <laughs> for meat and beans in a pint jar which is 75 minutes so i've got nine there so when i'm done with the first load i can fill my small canner with those and i have nine on the bottom and four up top. We're going to put the lid on, let it uh, vent for 10 minutes, and then we're going to pressure can it at 
10 pounds of pressure for 75 minutes. <laughs> okay, see you then. Okay, we're gonna pull them out of the canner. See what we got. Remember I did um, 13 in this load. The next load is going to be um, 9. And looks like we're doing good. I'll bring you down so you can see it a little bit better. And we didn't overfill with beans, so that's a good thing. It is more like a soup. <clears throat> the beans did swell, but I don't think they swelled so much that it will be too thick. You can see the pepperonis in there. Green peppers, I think. Yes. We are going to enjoy this soup. Um, I think that this this is good. I mean, it really is an incredibly good soup, and I hope that you'll at least try the Crock-Pot version. Um, I'm not sure how economical it is to can a whole bunch, but for Phil and I, um, I think it'll work out well to have this on our pantry shelves. Look at that bubbling. So how to serve this? You can just take it out of the mason jar and heat it up, or you can take it out of the mason jar, heat it up, and sprinkle a little bit of mozzarella cheese on top. Mm, mm -mm, good, maybe some garlic bread, breadsticks. It's all good. It will remind you of pizza in the most amazing way. Okay, remember, if you like what we do here, please hit that like, subscribe, and share. Check us out on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And until the next time, be safe.